Monday, March uh, 19th, I believe. I just came out of uh, out of the empty office. Uh, paid my fees, so this is my uh, binder truck, and finally all my paperwork is done for the new truck. Uh, so now I just need to take pictures of these uh, title or ownership and send it to my uh, insurance company. One copy will go to. Uh, to the broker. I think the insurance broker needs this. I think last time they were they were asking me. And so yeah, it took a long time because these guys are very busy. And uh, but then you know they she she just has a laser printer inside and she prints this you know basically for the truck uh, for a commercial truck over here in Canada and U.S. as well the same story except we call things different. Uh, like the main document is called ownership whereas in the states it's known as title but for commercial operations you need a cab card oh and one thing I wanted to mention also and so cab card it pretty much replaces the ownership they still want to look at it but you know, it looks like this, just with a sheet with a bunch of uh, bunch of numbers, and basically it just says, you know, plate owner. It's kind of like half of the information it copies from the ownership or title. Uh, plate owner, me. Vehicle owner is the financial company, Packard, and then my plate, my VIN, carrier type for hire, because it can be private. You know, private means that, uh, let's say you're a factory and you own some trucks and then your trucks just move your own stuff you know you're not for hire you're private right uh, or you can be a bus so carrier type I'm a carrier and account number effective date uh, okay expiry date so yeah it's already expires in September last day of September this year you know but what's cool is that I'm really happy that uh, I won't, this time IFTA will be very easy to do because the March is the end of the first quarter and I only filled up once and you know, so IFTA this time will be real easy, I'll do it manually and that's why I didn't sign up for, um, I didn't pay $10 extra a month US for keep tracking, I just got a basic package with the e-log but I think uh, starting April I'm gonna pay them more so I can track all my miles then I don't have to write it down each time I cross the you know border with another state or province but basically I wanted to mention so this cap card what's cool here is that well once I got a warning not a ticket but a warning for some reason uh, or oh, my my um, the trailer if you remember I had the orange Kaufman right and then when that one broke, Kaufman gave me a new trailer and it was uh, dark gray or black. But I did I I forgot to change the color on the ownership. I was not sure if it was important or not. And one guy, when I was going through uh, St. Catharines, just crossed from U.S. and I was going through St. Catharines, Ontario on uh, QW on the freeway. They stopped me and this guy, you know, he checks every detail in your paperwork. And... And my truck was parked like in the parking lot right but he came out made me you know switch out my lights and stuff like that and he says on your paperwork it says orange your trailer is not orange he says that's like I forgot 150 or 200 dollar fine you know but he, he just gave me a warning you know it was a, I guess the guy was in a good mood but that's what it's color BLK right so they don't put the full name they just use the three letter combination so black is BLK but the most important part here is the I got a list of all states and provinces in Canada and US and there's uh, next to that little uh, abbreviation for the jurisdiction is my maximum weight you know gross weight and it has it does not let's say LA Louisiana it says 80,000 pounds 
uh, it does not mean that I cannot haul uh, oversize overweight loads but in order to haul oversize overweight loads you must be registered for the maximum in this state and in the states not all of them are 80,000 pounds some of them are like Minnesota 150,000 uh, Nebraska 94,000 Michigan 160,000 um, South Dakota 150,000 and so of course all this costs money uh, so you can register just for 80,000 you know but then you won't be able to haul oversize overweight loads so basically they want you to pay extra money for this uh, because again it's more money than just register for 80,000 and then that's the step one that's required to haul oversize overweight loads right and one thing I'm still not sure here where's my uh, New York New York has some crazy rules over there I see 150,000 I'll have to double check that because uh, I don't remember is it more is it but I mean some states are like you know and uh, if you're not at the maximum let's say that state increased the the, the weight limit but you still registered you did not know about that and you still registered the old weight they will stop you at the scale and they'll give you some you know you'll get some headaches you know uh, I remember I was going through Oklahoma yeah Oklahoma 90,000 so if you registered for only 80,000 and you have a big load heavy load on your trailer and they check they'll give you a ticket you know and they won't let you go unless you pay right there because I know it happened to me with the Mac uh, my the guy took my cap card and it was not uh, registered for the maximum weight in that state and the boss had to call them and give him his credit card number on the phone right there otherwise the inspector says I cannot let you leave you know until you pay and I think it was like 200 bucks US you know and then of course you and then of course you have to uh, you have to uh, change your, your your cap card you know and over here it says this apportioned cap card must be carried in vehicle at all times is not valid as proof of vehicle ownership so uh, but technically that's the main document they look at and it's not transferable right but I picked up I double checked everything make sure you know it's me like my name is everywhere my name and the correct VIN number you know because otherwise you know that's important stuff anyway the plan today is um, I talked to the PTO shop last week right so uh, we want to do a one final uh, change to the to the hoses and this time I'm bringing the trailer and the guy said no problem so they're gonna give me the hoses again for free but I, I want to buy that uh, a wrap protector because I know um, because those hoses are I measured them they're like two and a half inches you know so basically you need a big wrap protector and I asked Kenworth um, the minimum was like 16 feet you have to buy you know so I want to ask these guys you know if they have it if they have this wrap protector after they give me new hoses I'll you know I understand because I don't have that now so they, I'll say I'll pay you know I'll pay for this because it's really important but also I'll show you guys on the truck right now I'm in my Ford Mustang right uh, when I get to the truck I'll show you what I want to do because this time I had to uh, uh, thread the hoses with my uh, electric lines are I don't like it very much like on the gooseneck um, I'll show you when I'm, when we're there and so I want to make them longer and also why I'm bringing the trailer is because um, my fifth wheel is still not all the way backwards in the back so I want to move it all the way back and then uh, especially since I'm getting the gooseneck extension right the 23 inch piece of, of a frame so that's why I need this I need uh, so I need to be able to keep the fifth wheel all the way in the back uh, and yeah and protect the hoses and so that's what I'm doing next and after that uh, thanks for one of the 
viewers for uh, for a tip I, I was not even I forgot about this one I think I heard some somebody's mentioning this uh, truck wash but I was ready to go to uh, Woodstock and Woodstock Ontario is uh, 25 miles away 50 kilometers and also it's it's much further where there's this truck wash is right here near uh, local you know Breslau the town is called Breslau and there's a uh, Kitchener Waterloo Airport is there and right next to that airport there's a there's a truck wash and I called them they said they open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and the prices are the same as in is in Woodstock I would I usually went to uh, TA uh, TA Travel Centers of America and then we're gonna I, I don't have a camera right now right but some people were asking me for you know quality pictures of the truck and that's why I want to wash you know plus the trailer is is you know you saw how it started corroding right because it still has the dirt from December last year when I was coming from uh, my last trip was from uh, Dallas Airport those small counterweights that I brought to uh, Pearson International Airport and there was salt everywhere you know so now I really want to wash this trailer and since somebody was asking me about the uh, pictures I don't have I don't I sold all my cameras right so now the only camera I have is is LG G6 and this one actually can do pretty good can take actually pretty good pictures um, and I can do 4k video but for the sake of photography if I switch to 4x3 photo size I can do 13 megapixels okay and so I got a tripod and this thing can do HDR high dynamic range and those pictures will look like you know really good and I got little bracket that I can put uh, the phone in and then I'm gonna connect that bracket to the tripod and so this time I'm gonna take uh, photos with my smartphone and I'm gonna after the truck is clean and I'm gonna upload them to my gallery at uh, you know that pixels.com website and I'll I'll put a preview like a small size on uh, on my Facebook page so you guys can turn that picture into anything I don't know a t-shirt a bag a shower curtain you know uh, and then later I plan to uh, I think I'll you know I'll get a cheap camera and basically to do mostly automotive or trucking photography and I'll be posting, I'll be adding uh, to that collection. It's called Heavy Trucks on my gallery. And I'll be taking pictures, you know, my truck trailer, like with loads, right? When I have some cool loads, I'll put a small picture on my Instagram. But, it, but if somebody wants to get like, uh, put it in a frame or something, uh, you, can, you can buy it from uh, uh, my website on pixels.com. So just keep an eye on that uh, heavy truck, heavy trucks gallery over there. So I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'm adding, you know, new photos there, especially after I, I'll get uh, some cheap DSLR, you know. All right, so I'm in Waterloo, Ontario. My truck is uh, 25 kilometers away. So it's all freeways. Let's get to the truck. And then I have to remember to bring this binder. Because it must be in the truck and bring my tripod. And we'll head over to the PTO. And then after that, we'll head over to the truck wash. And also this morning, where I was at Starbucks, I was checking the load board. Because I'm, I'm you know, after this, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm ready to start trucking and i need to get to south us to alabama pick up the flip box but i see loads out of there you know i see some interesting loads out of georgia out of tennessee but i don't see anything going that way like i see loads from here if i pick up a load so either i if that load pays okay or pays good from south i can go empty you know and then on the way i'll pick up my flip box and then i can do a load and bring back but that's like 1200 miles, you know. All right, 
from here, I need to get my tripod so I can take pictures uh, when the truck is uh, clean. Alright, got my key. still cold in the morning it was minus seven Celsius my binder now let me just show you guys uh, before picture right with the hoses I showed it everything couple of videos back okay. this goes in here the tripod will just go on the rear okay so so they're gonna disconnect it over here right and give me longer hoses and the thing is I want this hose to be to the left from that plate where the air hoses are connected now because over here you can you can see I got some uh, hoses in there you know and I, I don't wanna I don't wanna tear them apart over here just I don't like it when the but that's what I had to do because the hydraulic hose was too too short, right? And plus I will have a 23 inch uh, flip box over here. So the hose will have to go like this, you know? And I want to be able to move the fifth wheel all the way here. So, so that's why the connectors are, right? So the connectors are about one foot away from the kingpin. So this will be probably somewhere here right so this will be somewhere here Tank shows less than a quarter of a fuel 
I'll probably have to get some at least like 25 30 gallons you know 100 liters feels good feels good to be driving this apparat as we say in Russian you know it's such a huge truck but I really enjoy the um, the visibility like these huge mirrors and because they're so low like they sit over here right uh, it gets me a very nice you know view everything behind me and yeah like I mentioned before I decided not to do the the alignment yet uh, the sales guy recommends to wait you know 12 15,000 miles because right now I only have 1179 kilometers on the odometer and actually the first so the first service I'll be doing uh, 5,000 miles I'll, I'll go to to check all the connections on the new way suspension that's what they recommend and then at 15,000 miles that's the first service uh, recommended for the new truck by Kenworth and also part of that it's not an oil change it's just different checkups and one of the check I'll be doing is uh, alignment and so that's one I'll do alignment and uh, yeah I did notice the truck was kind of like wobbly when it was just bobtailing but then I hooked up to the trailer it became much better and plus you know I have no experience with uh, these huge tires I, I know of course they they uh, they perform differently So, oh yeah one more thing I'll have to do is uh, before I go get loaded is uh, check all my tires because the trailer was sitting the trailer was sitting still since December I'm pretty sure tires are all you know wrong pressure Show you guys something so i moved i dropped my suspension i dropped the trailer started the pto and i moved my fifth wheel all the way to the back you see here it's already touching this and that's where my kingpin is now that's where the hoses are connecting right and look what happens you see this one is not resting anymore it was resting on that cross member it's up now it's up and it's uh, pulling on those you know so you can see now that in this position if i hook up my flip box in here uh, it'll be tight you know 
I uh, I might have a problem when uh, making a you know sharp turn. Okay, the mechanic just left. Um, it's not now. It seems not too bad the weather, so he's gonna do everything outside. Very nice guys, you know. I highly recommend the shop. Uh, they have huge um, what they call like they can lift the entire truck in the air. You know they have those uh, winches, but like monstrous ones, like hydraulic. And we measured this hose. Like what I have now, turns out we have 11, right? 11 feet, just over 11. And he's gonna give me 13. Okay, so this way I'll be able to uh, thread that hose to the left of the connectors over there, on the other side, and he's gonna give me the wrap protection. And then I don't know, like I'll just tie it down with something so that it stays away from these air connectors, you know, like, yeah, these hoses, um can be a pain in the butt you know but it's always like first time when you're trying to figure out how to store them but uh, i remember on the mac i had a catwalk in here right and so i just i had the hoses tied with bungee cords on the catwalk but but we'll be good we'll be okay and so yeah next stop is uh washing the trailer I'm still I'm very happy that I did these uh, D-rings even with one coat only but they still look better than before and the outriggers right so we're getting there we're getting there this truck is still here I think it's the same truck I <laughs> I showed you guys last time oh yeah you see how this guy had a, has a catwalk. Uh, of course, I think this truck is much longer than mine. Oh, I got a pusher axle. That's why I don't have room uh, for the for that little ladder because of my pusher axle. And check out this flat bit over here. That's a typical Canadian stuff. So five axle. 5 axle, 20 wheels, try them in the middle, one pusher over here and one in the back and it has the crane over here, you know, this is a monstrous, check out the frame on this thing, <laughs> it's probably rated uh, 5 axles, it's probably, I don't know, 70 ton, you can also make good money with these trailers and occasionally I check I check online I check on my uh, uh, load board and sometimes I do see like heavy loads and it says F F or S flatbed or step deck uh, and most of them I saw were going to uh, to west of Canada All right, so surprisingly my truck is not beeping yet for fuel, but maybe I'll still buy that uh, because uh, the truck wash is basically I gotta go back to um, to my yard and then go north to that Breslau airport. And the new hoses are in. First of all, now they're almost fully covered with the wrap protector. And you see, now I was able to go around that plate with the hoses. And I put in a bungee cord in there. So this way for sure, that's pretty much how it was, uh, how it was on the Mac, right? Except I didn't have the, the wrap protector. So now it's really nice. Uh, and this is the furthest I can go so and we still have a slack right okay now we're going to get this baby washed you know so 
they got lots of room in here lots of room I love this truck and then after we wash we do the pictures and then we'll go have a lunch at that favorite Indian place I discovered right next to uh, right next to Starbucks in Cambridge My trailers over here. It's a Wilson dealer. They used to be called the Trailers Canada. Yeah, they sell Stoughton and they sell Wilson. All right, so some must be somewhere here. I knew it was a bad idea, so basically, well, maybe because you know, partly I'm I'm hungry, and when I'm hungry, I'm angry. But guys, please stop giving advice on on Facebook and YouTube, okay? Like, turns out these guys over here, uh, I knew there was something fishy about them. Like, it sounds too good to be true, you know, that there's a truck wash right in Breslau. Uh, basically they're so busy because they do mostly like detailing you know like when you have a truck and you want to sell it and they don't even have a bay you know like all their little bays the guy says oh you're here and I said how do I go in there oh you, did you book an appointment I said uh, no so what kind of a truck wash requires an appointment you know and they don't even have uh, like a bay where you can like once I went in turns out that was the wrong bay it was for tankers and it was the exit you know I basically have to drop your trailer like what a stupid waste of time you know like I'm so I said so you cannot watch me today ah uh, no we're so busy so I just didn't say anything I didn't say bye hi I just basically I'm trying to so I just drove 20 miles because I sent them a oh and I I asked them right in, in other like these people are idiots right I uh, I found the email address I'm just programming here my uh, GPS I found the uh, website and I found the email address and I emailed the guy I said what are your hours because this is the first time I hear about a truck wash we have to book an appointment you know like what is this a Russian bathhouse and the guy says we open 8 to 8 when would you like to come in uh, let me know and I said well I don't know yet but <coughs> I'll email you <coughs> <coughs> next week because I wanted to do it you know today and so I emailed them this morning when I was at Starbucks I, I sent an email I said uh, if it's okay I'm gonna stop by lunchtime and time now is 106 right and that was that was my secret plan to do it at one o'clock because I, I went to pick up my um, uh, cap card at 9 30 and then I figured I'll be at the PTO shop around 11 It'll take an hour and I'll be here at one. You know, and nothing. Like, what a waste of time. So, never, ever go to a truck stop that requires uh, appointments. What a bunch of BS. This 
So you cannot wash it today? Oh no, we're so busy. Unbelievable. To me, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like, you know, one of those restaurants where you go in, um, you call a restaurant and you say, hey, what are your hours? And they say, and they say, you know, 11 to 11. And then you go there and the guy says, did you book an appointment? Oh, what, you, you don't have... You don't have food right now? Oh, we do, but we're so busy. You have to book an appointment. Anyway, so, as usual, you know, when you book, when you do plans, when you make plans, not all of them happen, right? But at least... So I couldn't do, so no pictures. No, no pictures of the clean truck unfortunately but yeah and this place used to be called trailers canada but now it's called bredner bredner trailers first uh, Wilson step deck over there and then the second trailer I also bought from them was uh, 53 foot uh, flatbed uh, combo not aluminum just combo and so yeah I'm just driving back and that's the airport over here Breslau Airport. And then maybe later today, uh, I, I see the needle is touching the, the red line. I think it's gonna start blinking and flashing soon saying that I'm, I'm low on fuel but anyway so that's a quick update today right so uh, wash did not happen but at least I got the brand new hoses so we're good and now I just need to get 100 liters of diesel 25 gallons and I can start looking for for my first load and the weather's getting better. Time to get to work. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, stay tuned.